Wait, there's something very weak coming through. Quantitative analysis shows that video game publishers are actually charging gamers at a relatively inexpensive rate and should probably raise prices. <laughs> so, like Aaron, that's never going to go over well. So, Aaron, what do you think about that quote? Uh. galaxy far, far away. Hello, fellow Galactic listeners. I'm Aaron Hulian, and this is WSTR, Galactic Public Access, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode 48. Today, we are going to be talking about the release of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and those lovely microtransactions. Joining me today is Mr. Todd Hoffman. What is going on, my friend? Lots of good things, lots of not so good things. Good things, yes. More on that in a minute. Do we have Once to pay again, for this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> to, pay pay five dollars to unlock the enhanced edition uh, of this episode. Awesome. Yeah. Pay thirty bucks for the complete experience. <laughs> right. Exactly. Pay forty five more on top of that for the season pass. You can get all the new <laughs> episodes <laughs> and the behind scene scene featurettes. A couple skins. Yeah. Couple skins. The, the steel book. Yeah. The the, right. the statuette. Right. Right. Oh yeah. All, we can. We'll that. have we have our own action figures and stuff. Yeah. It's just yeah. like. It's the first microphone model we can find for free. <laughs> right. And we're public public domain. And yeah, we're just exactly. gonna cast it in cast it in pewter, paint gonna, it bronze. Right. I, we'll have a bronze like snowball microphone for you, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Advertising. Uh, advertising. There you go. Yes, yes. So this could also what be what happens if uh the FCC throws out net neutrality. So um <laughs> call call your Congress people. Right, oh, no. exactly. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you can check us out on social media, all of them, at WSTR Media, all one word, all lowercase. And now for our feature presentation. So, Todd, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah. Like, how, how, how do we get here? Like what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'm I'm, wa- I'm waking up in a stupor, <laughs> right, and like right, right, right. You know all the all the all the lights are out. The power's cut. Like yeah, trying to get out yeah. of the room, and suddenly Star Wars Battlefront Two is just there. It's just so there. What, so what what happened? Okay, well as you know, um, EA uh, has the license for Star Wars, and so uh, this happened before a, a couple years ago when. The Force Awakens was just about to arrive in the mm. theaters, and we had Star Wars Battlefront that came out in um, November seventeenth, twenty fifteen. So it was an exclusive uh, for the uh, for the PlayStation Two and the Xbox three hundred and sixty, and um, it's developed by Panda. Oh, am I? Am I talking about the wrong <laughs> Battlefront? That's, that's the wrong Battlefront, oh, dude. No, uh, this is the EA. Battlefront. Ah, EA yeah. Battlefront. Okay, yeah, it's, now it's, we're getting somewhere. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, keep a track, you know, but this is this was for the, you know, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, and it got a Metacritic score of like 73. So, not... Which, you know, in the real world, is pretty good. Yeah, right. 73 ain't bad. Yeah. Um, but in video game land, that's like it's a, like a horrible, yeah. trashy, <laughs> right. yeah, like don't even bother right. score, right. which right that in itself is ludicrous. But I could probably <laughs> spend an hour talking about that. <laughs> we're not we're not here to dissect the Metacritic scoring system, but um, it just by by most people it was an okay game. Yeah, yeah, and and the biggest knock was it didn't have any single player, and mm. the multiplayer was a little flat, like. It yeah. wasn't wasn't a lot there, but for me personally, the greatest thing that the heroes were really well balanced, and I thought that was hmm. you know when you're a hero, uh, all their power ups were unique and different, and they were fun, and it was good just to be in the Star Wars universe. And like uh, even when they did like the early beta, 
the stats were like just they did like a cool info card and you're just like you know everyone played Darth right. Vader and it was like fantastic and you got all those fun like clips of at at stomping yo uh Luke Skywalker and guys sniping mm-hmm. Tie Fighters and it was like oh this is amazing and then the game came out and everyone's like oh I'm done with it in two weeks yeah. so um, yeah I, they I have, played it for a grand total of maybe five hours. Um, right, but you also bought it like two years later. <laughs> yeah, after the hype a year had, later, had settled later, down yeah, and it, yeah. the price had dropped and everything, I played it and I'm like, "Wow, this is a really pretty game." And then I then I played it and I'm like, "Wow, this is a pretty bland game." Yeah, it's like yeah. Um, when you buy like a box of oatmeal and like the mm-hmm. picture on the box looks really really delicious. Delicious. And then like you know, you got the little dinosaur eggs in there and they're all like hatching and like stuff like that. And what kind of oatmeal actually, are you getting, man? That's fantastic. You've never had dino you've never had like dinosaur egg oatmeal? No. I've uh, never. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's still around, but it's like um I, I don't know what they were made of. I, I want to say marshmallow, but that's probably not correct. Um okay. but they were like just like these little like edible dinosaur eggs that would be right. mixed in with your oatmeal and okay. like you poured them you poured like milk over them or something, and um, they, they would ma- like crackle ma- and and like they magically hat- evolve, hatch a little bit. Yeah, yeah they like yeah. change color yeah. and everything, and it's cool. sweet. I think oh, they're still man. around, but anyway, like you see that, and it's like wow. And then you actually pour yourself a bowl, and it doesn't taste that great. There's like yeah. two egg, two eggs in there. You're like yeah. they don't change color, and you're just like, eh, nah. well, yeah. It was it was five dollars. <laughs> <So. laughs> it was five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. and the other thing too, um, it was only run at 720p, man. Old, uh, old for, con- for consoles. Yeah, the old frostbite my, engine. <laughs> yeah, the old, the old yeah, frost- my hoity-toity PC. <laughs> PC <laughs> the horse. PC. Yeah, the PC. I see. Yes. Mm, s- mm, two K. <laughs> Sixty frames a second. <laughs> <Back answer. laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Chromatic aberration. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dynamic range lighting. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's um, it's something else. I know. I know. I understand. But yeah, so that was a big knock. Like uh Frostbite really couldn't the Frostbite engine couldn't really get it at the ten eighty. Um yep. yeah, it was running at a native like seven twenty, but you know. For those kids details. For all those kids, they they didn't notice. So Yeah. They just want to be Darth Vader. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, so I, overall, I mean, it had some legs. It, I mean, they released some DLCs, and uh, yeah, so people still went and, and came back and played it, and they they tried to, you know, spice it up, and there's some good, you know, hero, ads on, hero add-ons, and, um, mm-hmm. and the last one, uh, the last D- DLC that dropped was tied in directly to Rogue One, so there you go. There you go. How there many new go. maps did they add? Over the span of the uh, DLC, so there was four DLCs, and I think each one had like two or three maps to each one, and everyone had like two heroes, one you know, a hero and a villain for each one. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it so was, by the time like all the DLC came out, it was more or less a finished game. Yes, but again, okay. it was only the only the other knock was this, it was just classic trilogy. There was no, yep, yeah. Yeah. No prequel. So, no prequel. No. Someone would say against. that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right. So now, now that was all 2015. That's all news, man. Now, now we're on. Now we're in 2017, and so mm-hmm. they announced via the Twitter that um, January 31st, 2017, they're gonna have an all new single player campaign. Whoa! Plus. Plus, it will feature all errors found in the films. Whoa! And then, on March 29th, EA announced the sequel, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Whoa! (laughs) What a value! (laughs) What ingenious naming. (laughs) (laughs) Not to be confused with uh, the other Battlefront. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah, right, right. Or the regular Battlefront. Right. This is EA. Star Wars Battlefront 2. So it's in the game. It's in the game, man. Um, there's a lot of other things in the game that we're gonna get to very, very close. Cool. <laughs> very, That's very shortly. Sure. Yeah, very, very shortly. We, you know, we're just bringing, 
we're bringing the listeners along for the ride. You know, it's it's a slow build. It's a slow build. So, um, yep. so they announced that you know January March. Okay, cool. And then they had an alpha build, which Aaron, you were a part mm-hmm. of. You mm-hmm. got a, you got that magical email. So this was before I bought the original. No, after I bought the original Battlefront. But like I said, I only played like five hours. And right. I guess like that made me like an anomaly in their system, and they're like, uh, "We better get, we better figure out why this guy only <laughs> dropped is, it after five who, hours." Who is this Aaron who just bought the game like a year later after it was already released? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, I I wake up one day to an email saying, "Hey, you've been chosen by the force, I guess, to uh, <laughs> test test the new Battlefront game." And I got right. into the alpha, and nice. um, you can actually hear my complete thoughts on it. In episode twenty nine. Oh yeah, and they're we, complete. Uh, we talked about it on the podcast. We yeah, we broke they're... the law by talking about it on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, the yeah, you know, like user end user license agreement or whatever, <laughs> right? Which the, sec- the secret much handshake else is breaking. So yeah, the secret handshake where you just check a box, like yeah, yeah. I want game yeah. check box. <laughs> right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so, I had so the alpha, yeah. and uh, to, to summarize, I thought the gameplay was a bit better than the first Battlefront. Um, the graphics were amazing, as mm-hmm. expected. Um, it was cool being able to play as the prequel dudes. Um, but I, 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 I smelled some blood in the water. <laughs> I, I saw I saw something coming over the horizon. Um, something fishy. Something fishy. Yeah. So. They they had the star card things that yeah, um, which were in the first game. True, those are yes. mostly like they were, let you unlock abilities to use. Yes, they were weapon um, based. So a star card, basically in, in Battlefront uh, terms, the star card was like okay, you get thermal detonators, or you get uh, trip mines, or you get rocket launchers, or whatever. A super shiny sniper rifle. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, in Battlefront 2, the star cards changed to be ability uh, focused. So um, you basically pick, you have your loadout, which, you know, you have a couple of selections of weapons um, yeah. and then some uh, stats for what your character would be and mm-hmm. some different abilities that you can choose from based on what star cards you have. And those star cards. Um, basically, as you collect more and more of them, you can make your abilities more powerful um, yep. by the numbers. So, yep. for example, it could like reduce reduce the cooldown of the rest of your abilities by 10, 20, 30 percent based on how many star cards you got. Right. Um, and this and the star cards are now they have different colors. And so there's like, yeah, they've got rarities like, yes, uh, yeah collecting Pokemon cards or whatever. Yeah, like Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, but the way you got these in the alpha, just like as you played, um, and like leveled up and got progression and get like, uh, play time, they would just drop in these loot crates. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. Loot crates. Um, loot crates. And for those who are unfamiliar with what a loot crate is, it's basically like, opening up like a Magic the Gathering card pack at Walmart or whatever. Uh-huh, um, yeah. he, you know, it's just like a random assortment of you never know what you're going to get. Um, oh, the and... old blind box. The blind box. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, you might get like one rare card and a bunch of piddly common ones. Yeah. You might get a couple of rares. Right. Um, you might just get credits or whatever. So Republic um, credits. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Okay. And so I, I, I talked about this in the episode how yeah. I, I was like, I hope, I really hope that, uh, you know, they don't, that they tweak these or that they're not unfair. Or yes. They just yeah. like get rid of them in the final game. But right, 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 right. Well, we'll talk oh, about that. Oh, in a, in we're, a bit. yeah. Well, we're almost there, man. So, and then uh, the beta c- came out in October. So if you pre order the game, you got an early access to the beta, which, um, you know, basically you could do some multiplayer stuff. And it was it was fun. It was a fun little beta. They, sh- show, you know, got to see a little bit more of 
the menu structure and everything was laid out and but mm-hmm. everything was like you know everything's grayed out everything's locked out i mean it's just like a you know just uh you could do a little uh multiplayer that was it and then that closed down after they extended it it was like only going to be for a weekend but they saw a lot of traffic and they're like hey we'll yep. keep it open cuz we we love the people of star wars and so they they uh they came you know they extended the beta i think it was almost like 2 weeks the beta was out um yeah it's out a pretty fair long time yeah it was out it's out a good a good amount of time and you know so you know and that that again for non gamers that's really allows the you know the developers to say okay where's where's our bottlenecks how do we change things around where you know they could see the heat maps and see where players what right. our players are doing and it just allows them to make sure everything's bounced out because yeah they could tweak that when the final product's released but they want to get it really fine-tuned um and see how the servers handle loads and all that kind of stuff so it really it's helps like a them drive out. run before they it's, actually yeah, launch the product. It, well, and they, you know, you don't want to launch the product and something terrible happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. So, um, okay, so finally, uh, November 17th, exactly two years later, Aaron. I don't know if you noticed that. It's spooky. It spooky. It's almost like they planned it. So <sighs> now, now they have EA Dice. Dice is the main developer but then you have uh Crian- Crianton games am i saying that right Cr- uh, Cr- criterion uh, criterion they they're ones uh they're known for burnout they done they they be done in the burnout series uh the racing mm-hmm. game series and then motive studios is, is um the other um developer so there's three studios involved yep. um and it came out uh literally 4 days ago <laughs> yeah the but okay, so here's the little but. So um, mm. EA has what is called an EA pass. Okay, so what that allows you to do is like get you get uh, you pay uh, four ninety nine or something like that a month, or you can get access to all these EA games. And what they did for Battlefront Two is that you get to play it actually ten hours of playtime in the game, so you get the full game. And but you only get ten hours, and you can do whatever you want. Yep. And that would transfer over. That that would transfer over. So if you got say, let's just say you were playing multiplayer and you got to like level ten, that would actually trans transfer over into uh, when you got the full blown version on November seventeenth. So it's like a was, head start. It's like a head start. Yeah. So this is where this is where we're gonna just. Say things started to <laughs> fall apart very quickly. <laughs> so, oh, so, boy. so basically, you know, in the beta, like I said, everything's kind of grayed out, and you've got a very limited options as far as how you know how the game works. But you, you only got like a a small little piece. But now with this a preview and this access pass, basically, you get the you're, you're seeing the whole game. It's the whole game, right? So people are like trying to figure out, okay, what the star cards is and what's my level system and how do I unlock things? And, you know, it's all kind of coming together. And this is where it goes off the rails, man. So, <sighs> <laughs> so Aaron, mm. well, we, we, so last week uh, we had our good friends, uh, Heather and Danny from Kessel Run, uh, weekly on and uh yeah we kind of this was really really hot for us last week and so why don't we just kind of yeah. bring everybody up to speed so what happened aaron monday the uh 13th yes so monday the 13th um it, it, this is i guess this is during the ea access pass period Yes, um, and, and I think at this point on the thirteenth, this is when the pre-order. Since you, if you pre-ordered, you got an early lead on the game. So, right, yeah. So there you go. So during this period, um, someone playing the game was concerned about. Um, you, you, well, basically, what they said they went to the Star Wars Battlefront subreddit. Um, I guess his name is MBM Maverick, and he commented just like, 
Seriously? I paid $80 to have Vader locked? This is a joke. I'll be contacting EA support for a refund. I can't even play Darth Vader? Disgusting. This age of microtransactions has gone way too far. Leave it to EA, though, to stretch the boundaries. So he's obviously very upset about, um, you know, having paying $80 for the, I guess, like, Elite Trooper edition of Battlefront 2. Right, um, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll explain that later. But he paid, you know, pretty pretty expensive price for a game. Um, and even even then, just playing as Vader, it's locked behind a bunch of progression he has to do. And um, the, the, the kind folks over at uh, the EA customer service team um, saw this and replied with the following. The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. As for cost, we selected initial values based upon data from the open beta and other adjustments made to milestone rewards before launch. Among other things, we're looking at average per player credit earn rates on a daily basis and we'll be making constant adjustments to ensure that players have challenges that are compelling, rewarding, and of course attainable via gameplay. We appreciate the candid feedback and, and the passion the community has put forth around the current topics here on Reddit, our forums, and across numerous social media outlets. Our mm -hmm. team will continue to make changes and monitor community feedback and update everyone as soon and as often as we can. What they're leaving out and what was discovered by other Redditors um, who have <laughs> also had early access is that right, yeah. part of the problem why he's complaining so much about Vader is that somebody yeah. calculated that... Um, at least in the beta, um, and with the early well, no, access this is, pass. Yeah, this, yeah, this is an early access pass. Yeah, early yeah. access pass, excuse me. Yeah. Um, they calculated that to, based on the credit drop rates and how often you get loot crates, um, based on the player progression, it would take around 40 hours of gameplay to unlock one hero. Yeah. Uh, and so, and that's so in a, the, that's in the, assuming in the you game, like the yeah. hero afterwards. Yeah. yeah. In the gamer community, you would call that grinding. <laughs> yeah yeah you're um, just like grinding this out to get you know to get the credit build to basically unlock uh the infamous darth vader yes so the complaint was made that even after paying 80 dollars for a game which is pretty steep for a game pretty yeah yeah pretty yep. steep yeah. um that you still have to grind for 40 hours to unlock not all the heroes but one of them mm -hmm. um and Reddit did not take it well. <laughs> no, <laughs> to uh, the, have it as the, a to put an yeah. understatement. Yeah, the fury um, the fury was real, and they pulled EA actually pulled like you couldn't do it on the website. You had a call. Call times were like yeah. an hour. You couldn't because they were trying yeah, a lot of so, a lot of a lot of people um, were trying to ref you know get the refund on the pre order basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Reddit has a system where um, you can upvote or downvote posts or comments to basically the intent is not to show that you agree or disagree, but it's pretty much what it's become. It's to show if it's relevant to whatever. It's basically yeah, yeah. now it's yeah. just approval. Um, th th that comment that I read earlier by the EA community team set a Reddit history record <laughs> of how many? At, at the time I'm looking at this, yes. uh, 675,000 plus down votes. That is a lot of angry internet users, man. To put it in perspective, the yeah. previously most downvoted comment on Reddit, right, which was right. done as a joke, uh -huh. was 24,000 down votes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that record's going to stay for a long time. That is, um, a, good, that is a great record. <laughs> Yeah, so, so basically so, the, yeah. the accusation being made against EA is that yeah. um, even after charging for a game, they basically place the hero so far out of reach and make the grind so long and difficult that they're hoping they, you just give in and yep. buy a yep. bunch of loot crates and then yep. get your progression that way, right. um, further milking you out of, out of money. So Yes, exactly. So that was right, the Reddit debacle. Yes. So basically that next day EA's like, "Ah, oh, okay. Oops, we goofed. We'll we're going to pull it pull the um pull it temporarily and um we're going to reduce the amount of credits it will take to get to Darth Vader. Um 
Yeah, and then Wednesday... By like 75%, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was by like um, 75%, yeah. By leaving Wednesday, out the fact yeah. that they also reduced the rate at which credits drop. <laughs> right, and they capped the, Oops. The, and they capped the credits as well. Yes, so yeah. the offline modes, you can earn credits, um, they, and they, they put a cap those. on how they many you can them. earn per day. So they're like, yeah. you can't have fun that way. Get back online. <laughs> Right, right. We're, you can still have. You can't grind that way. You've got to go online to do this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then, um, so then they have a Reddit forum, right? On on Wednesday the fifteenth, like ask, ask yes. EA anything. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, technically, it's it was an ask me almost anything. They put some <laughs> stipulations on right. what you could and could not ask. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know how they imagined that would go down. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It did not go well. No, it didn't. And, and then, and then this is where. <laughs> so that goes down. And then by Thursday, okay, so Thursday the sixteenth. Um, and again, the game releases the seventeenth. So we haven't even got to the official release date of the game. Yeah. And by the sixteenth, uh, Big Daddy Bob Iger, who's the CEO of, um, you know, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. He he comes in. Oh boy. <laughs> and, and he's home and he's angry. <laughs> Again, like at Iger's level, I don't think they have these conversations like, oh, this is what we're gonna do, or you know, I, I think I think it's pretty autonomous, you know. Um I'm mm -hmm. sure obviously Lucasfilm and, and EA talked about all the storyline and everything, and obviously they're using the assets from Lucasfilm. So there's definitely collaboration there, but like at the end of the day, they're not really telling EA how to design the game or dice, how to design the game. It's pretty autonomous to that, but basically Iger, mm -hmm. Iger reaches out to EA and says, just pull the whole thing. No. <laughs> oh boy. So when your boss I mean, calls you. Yeah. The day before release. I know. It's never a good thing. Never a good thing. And so I, I guess we should just backtrack just a smidge because uh, part of, you know, uh, some of the fans complaint was the, you know, you had to pay money for the DLC, right? And so yeah. in, in, in the original Battlefront, okay. Well, the 2015 Battlefront. And, uh, and mm -hmm. so they made an announcement, you know, like E3 and just basically say, hey, DLC is for free, and you're going to have all this new content, and you're going to have single-player content as well as multiplayer content, and it's all See, free. we're the good guys. Yeah, and every, and the crowd goes nuts. Yes! You know, so, the you know, this way... I talked about this, too. I yeah. told them the <laughs> microtransactions are going to pay for the DLC. Yes, exactly. So... Uh, they they it's a bait and switch basically they say okay you're not going to have to drop 40 bucks on the dlc or the season pass you're just going to get you're going to get it free but now we have this little thing you know and let's let's kind of be fair microtransactions are not a rarity in AAA games it's just that it's um it's different because you know in this system it changes it, the real money ha unlocks like items and weapons that are actually affect gameplay where in other triple a games, it's more or less like skins and cosmetic stuff. Right. Um, you know, like you if you want to paint jobs. Yeah. I mean, it's all, you know, it's all kind of, um, it, it's all kind of cosmetic. It has nothing to do with like, um, the actual gameplay, but that's what's going on with, this one, and that's why the fan fury was intense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So intense, it caused EA stock to drop. <laughs> yeah. It caused Big Daddy Iger to yeah. call, call yeah. EA in the middle of the night. Yeah, and just say, you got to stop this, you know? So um, here, I'm going to read this little article from CNBC. So... Wall Street is worried about the, you know, the title is Wall Street's worried about the controversy over EA Star Wars Battlefront 2 in-game monetization model will hurt the video game sales. So 
it goes on to say like they don't think it's going to hit the 13 million sales it originally forecast because like a lot of people are like that ain't my star wars <laughs> you know um and Which, by but, the way yeah if you sell depending on the game and the budget and everything but yes if your game sells like five hundred thousand copies that's considered yeah. a success right they were forecasting 13 million right well <sighs> it's it's pretty mind blowing, right? Because yeah, I mean the thing is, is that you you start a little before you know the diehard video game and Star Wars fans are gonna buy this right now, right? And then the movie comes out, and they're like, oh, "I want to play, I want to play a video game that has Star Wars stuff in it." And boom, here you go. Yep. And uh, but this is this is really leaving a lot of people jaded, you know. Um, but okay. So the CNBC article, the analyst, uh, this guy, uh, one of the analysts says estimated cost per hour for a typical Star Wars Battlefront two player. He said, if a game, if, if you spent 60 bucks for a game an additional 20 per month on the loot transaction boxes and played around 2.5 hours a day for one year, it comes out to roughly 40 cents per hour of entertainment. This compares to it. Yeah, that's pretty good. This comp- uh, this compares to an estimate sixty cents to sixty five cents per hour for play- pay television, eighty cents per hour for movie rental, and then three dollars per hour for a movie watched in a theater, according to this firm's analysis. So, and then it goes on to say, um, if you take a step back and look at the data, an hour of video game content is still one of the cheapest forms of entertainment. Quantitative analysis shows that video game publishers are actually charging gamers. At a relatively inexpensive rate and should probably raise prices. <laughs> so like, Aaron, that's never going to go over well. So Aaron, what do you think about that quote? Uh, so I've been d- trying to wrestle with this kind of issue uh, the past couple of years about how video games are just like super, super expensive now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Grand Theft Auto V uh, costs like $200 million to make, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I think Metal Gear Solid V was like $250 million to produce, like a mm-hmm. pro- maybe even higher. Um, it it would have been higher if Konami didn't pull the plug early, but... That's that, a whole that, other that, story. That, that yeah. again is another hour-long rant. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, I've always just wondered, like, who is asking for games to be this expensive? Yeah. Um, when, you know, you've got a bunch of smaller indie companies who are just making an absolute killing by, you know, keeping their costs small, um, their games small, and charging, you know, 15, 30 bucks uh, for these smaller games that are just super fun. Mm-hmm. Um the art style is great, and so it's pretty yeah. to look at. Yeah. And you don't really care that it's not this huge, expansive open world or whatever you want your game to be. And um, I can actually uh, point you to an example of this. Please do. There's a, yeah, there's a small uh, indie developer named Ninja Theory. Um, I don't know how many people work for it. Um, I believe it's like four main core people um and then they contract out a bunch of work um but uh earlier this this year august 8th they um released a a game called hellblade senwa's sacrifice and um it's basically it's it's a single player game about this uh like viking nordic sorry celtic uh, warrior as she's like uh, basically cast out from her society and she's trying to uh, find her lost lover and has to basically go through this like um, psychotic hellscape. Yeah. Um, and it's actually more or less like a exploration of what psychosis is like and okay. mental illness. Sure. And they, they actually conduct like consulted with a expert in the field um, about that and she the the doctor actually gets the like the first credit of the game 
um, oh, because wow. her, her work was so foundational to it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the game looks amazing. It's got AAA quality graphics. The gameplay is pretty good. Yeah, It's got a very interesting concept, and it's not how, that long of a game. Right. It's maybe like 12 hours. Okay. Um, and how much and money would it cost, Aaron? I, I don't know what the budget was to make the game, oh, okay. but they uh, they just charged 30 bucks for it. And yeah. that thing sold like hotcakes. Um, I don't have specific numbers for you. I remember it being at least a million. So um, you, you wager a million dollars times 30. That's $30 million. They don't keep all of it, of course. Of course, yeah. Um, let's say yeah. they take in $10 million from that, right. minus whatever costs that uh, went into making the game. Like, yeah, that game did not cost $10 million to make. You know, no, so right. it's still very profitable for them. Right. And, you know, it's, it was a hoot with uh, gamers and critics alike. And so it's that's proof positive that you can make smaller games and still be successful. Absolutely. What I think is happening yeah. is you've got these old guards of the video game industry, you, you know, EA, Activision, um, you know, and they've... For a long time, while graphics technology was developing, the, the focus was on, like, how good can our graphics be? How can we get them, you know, shinier, prettier, more polygons, better textures, yeah. et cetera? Yeah, exactly. And so um, that's also part of why the console war was also in place is because, like, oh, if you get Xbox, you get better graphics. No, if you get a PlayStation, you get better graphics. Or, like, <laughs> we've got the prettier games on our right. side and you don't. Yeah. You um, and I think yeah. that's what's driving it. And so all that research and development and all the artists that you need to make like these huge well, games that take like hundreds of hours to beat and and these and, huge and this one worlds. and this one yeah. has three gaming studios tied to it. Developers. Yeah. Yeah. Um they, they want to yeah. flip it around so fast to get it ready for uh, The Last Jedi that they gotta you know, contract out a bunch of work too. So that yeah. adds, adds to the cost. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like, why is all this necessary when you can still enjoy a very, very comfortable measure of success by just keeping your game small? Mm -hmm. And you don't even need like AAA graphics, like, um, you know, like Angry Birds. Like <laughs> that made <laughs> millions and millions and millions, millions. of money. Millions. You know, with simple yeah. graphics, uh, simple, simple graphics. gameplay, yeah. Um, yeah. and, you know, just, like, keeping yeah. the gameplay fun and addictive and it's right. a good time waster and everything. And, and, and they had like, a Star Wars version, too. Yeah, Star Wars version. Yeah, so yeah. Um, a, a, another ingredient to this uh, delightful catastrophe is... Um, <laughs> right, right. Uh, game prices really haven't changed in the past, like, 20 30 years yes and um, and that's and that's what you're kind of getting from the and the you know that cnbc article is like hey you're you're getting a pretty good bang for your buck you know with yeah, the amount of hours you're putting true. in yeah um even if you go like the pc route and build your own pc yeah um, cost per hour video games are pretty much the cheapest form of entertainment especially if you hunt down sales and you're waiting willing to wait for good deals and things like that. Um, so uh, if you if you look back on like old uh, Nintendo catalogs um, for their games, like Super Mario Brothers, like that used to cost like 60, 80, $100 back in the day just for like one cartridge. Um, and for the longest time, $60 is pretty much the price point for a new AAA game. Um, that people are willing to pay. Yeah. And even with inflation and the rising cost of games, that hasn't really gone down. And I think wh why this whole microtransaction, you know, fever is hitting is because, you know, EA's Millennials. Like, okay, millennials. That's why it's <laughs> No, hitting. don't you even start. Um, <laughs> millennials are killing the video game industry. They're, they're killing um, it. They just want to get all the cool stuff and pay for it. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, you know, EA recognizes that people are not really going to be willing to drop more than $60 on a game. So they're like, fine, um, $60 will get you the base version of the game. If you want, like, right. the extra shiny one, yeah. you got to pay $80. And people are like, Correct. okay, that's 
20 more bucks, that's a pizza, whatever. Um, <laughs> right, then, yeah. But then after that, you've got these microtransactions, which they started with mobile games. Um, and a lot of them are just Skinner boxes where it's like, you know, they keep you hooked with, you know, you get a bunch of wins in a row and then all of a sudden like, oh, no, like you, yeah. you got to wait on a timer. But if you pay like 99 cents, you can Sense. like skip past that timer and keep playing. Yeah. So people yeah. are like, oh, okay. That's like a breath mint, right? And then, right. Uh, you know, you keep going. And the idea is now, you know, made its way into pretty much every vid- every major video game now where yeah. they 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 say, okay, you're not willing to pay more than 60, 80 bucks on the front end. We're, we're just going to charge you a bunch of money on the back end now too. Right. And so right. they have a bunch of microtransactions. And that's yeah. that's not necessarily bad. If that's the way they want to do things, I would prefer they just make smaller games, smaller budgets, and, you know, just not nickel and dime people. But yeah. um, microtransactions themselves are not the devil um, if, if you do no, them fairly. Like, right, exactly. And it doesn't affect how you play the game. Like, basically, how this whole Ponzi seems set up is like, I could drop an extra 50 bucks and I would get everything unlocked and I wouldn't have to put one hour in, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah, it, it's um, just, it's just a weird, you know, I, I, you know, the, the reward is like, Hey, if I, if I beat the single player game, I should get some cool unlocks. If I do something cool with these weapons that should unlock better weapons for those, classes and that kind of thing and and right it's some of that's there in the game already um but just the fact that the pay to win thing is you know that that's why it, it's it set the internet on a fury you know so yeah and, and it's not just that um a, a lot of games have something called a free to play model which is right. yeah if you want to you could just hop into the game and play it for free and experience all the content without paying a dime the the price you actually pay is you're going to be grinding a lot so um after a certain point uh it's going to be less generous with rewards and you're pretty much paying for the game with time um what they're hoping that you do is basically get tired of waiting for the time and so you buy some microtransactions and then you it hurries you along and the way that works is like I think around like 70% of players for an average free-to-play game just don't spend any money. And it's that remaining 30% that really get hooked into the game and really like it that they end up paying the most um, out of everybody else and basically subsidize the game for every for everybody else. Right. Um, but we're not talking about a free-to-play game here. We're talking about a game that costs $60 or more yeah. like $80 if you want yeah. that extra edge. Right. And they're charging on the back end of that. And not only that, but they're doing they're doing it through loot boxes, yeah. which they don't give you a guarantee for what you get. Um, I would be more okay with it if it was like, oh, this star card that you want, it's... For, well, first of all, it's just cosmetic. It doesn't affect the gameplay, so you right. can't buy an advantage over other people. But right. second of all... I just want this skin for my stormtrooper. I'm just going to buy it directly for 99 Correct. cents or whatever. Yep. Yeah. No, you have to, you have to, you might have to pay five, 10, 15 bucks in loot crates to get that thing that you want. Yeah. Or but... it just might never drop and you got to, you end up paying an additional $60 uh, for that thing you want. Yeah. But um, the blind, the blind box, the, the unboxing is all the rage now. So you're not going to get. Is. It, yeah, you, you're just like, okay, I might get the rare star card and then I get all these other crappy cards that I don't really care about, but I got that one rare one yeah. and that, that was worth the price of whatever that was. So, yeah. I still don't like it. I don't think it's <laughs> consumer friendly <laughs> no, or ethical. No, it's not. It's not. It's less egregious than buying yeah. power advantages over other people. Yes. Yeah. Like, um, I, I bought yeah. the game Destiny 2. Uh-huh. And, oh, uh, yeah. And it's a hoot. It's a lot of fun. Uh Um, but they've got a form of loot boxes in there where it's basically, um, it's just cosmetics, which is fine, but, um, basically as you level up and grind, um, it'll give you a free, like pretty good loot box every time you level up. Yeah. And 
they'll give you like lesser loot boxes um, as basically rewards for quests and doing specific activities in the game. Gotcha. Um, and it's just like cosmetics, so yeah, um, you know, it could be well. The ones that are dropped that you earn in game, they actually contain items that make you more powerful. Um, the ones that you can buy for their premium currency is just cosmetics, so it's just oh, going to be gotcha. Yeah, um, and that's and again, like again, it's microtransactions in a game are not are not anything new, you know. So yeah, yeah those that that's fine. I, I mean, I'm okay with that, you know. Yeah, I, I'd rather just like buy the color scheme that I want. And just yeah. stick with it, but right, yeah, whatever. Um, well, whatevs, yeah, it's less yeah. egregious. My, my only thing is like loot boxes, there's been allegations that it's uh psychologically stimulating people in the same way that gambling does. And interestingly hmm. enough, there was a article I think earlier today, um, okay. where there's an investigative committee in Belgium looking into whether loot boxes um, are, legally speaking, gambling, um, and they concluded that they are. The oh, my goodness. The mi Minister of Justice in Belgium says the mix Those... of gaming and gambling is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, it um, is. It I would is. argue, I, I would argue, strictly speaking, it's not gambling because you're not putting money in to get money back out. Um but right, it's almost, I'm, it's almost. I mean, lack of a better term, you're investing in the product that you have, you know. But yeah, and there's, I, I, there's you know, I understand what they're saying. Again, it goes back to you know, kids playing this as well as adults. Adults yeah, probably that, could handle it, and and then, um, you know, uh, that, that, this is, that's my concern. The the ESRB, which provides ratings for every video game sold in retail stores right. in the U.S. Um, they don't have any regu regulatory power per se, but you know if they slap an M rating game, then most games are not or most stores are not going to sell it to minors. Um, of course, if, it, if of they course. slap an adults only rating on it, which they pretty much never do, but if yeah. they do, then it's probably not getting sold in retail stores. Right. Um, they they concluded that loot boxes are not gambling. Um, so, but that that's my main concern is that the nature of loot boxes itself is. Um, could be addictive to kids or yeah. uh, those prone to gambling addictions. Yeah, um, exactly. Even even if it's not legally speaking gambling. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, um, nobody publishes the odds of what items you're going to get in a loot box. Um, I I believe uh, most like collectible card games they like guarantee one rare card yes. or yep. better yeah. in, in, yeah. in the pack. So you're like, okay, at least I'm getting something. When, right. when I put buy, five dollars down, I'm at least getting something that's right, right. valuable. If I um, buy that gold foil packaging one, it's going to give me, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you, you don't have that in video games. You're like, oh, I could just get a bunch of skins for the speeder bike that I don't want or that I never use. You know, <laughs> right, or exactly. it's a particular exactly. problem in Overwatch. Um, it's probably the game that popularized loot boxes the most um, because if you have your favorite character. There's like a million characters in that game, and you could just get oh. a bunch of loot boxes in a row where you never you get any. It doesn't. Any, yeah, it does. Any it doesn't pertain to that character. character. Yeah. 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 I totally get that. Um, I, I I would counter argue that in that kind of game, you're not supposed to have a main character. You're supposed to just swap out depending on what your team needs. But I digress. People have favorites anyway. <laughs> Again, why can't you just like directly <laughs> buy the thing you want? Right. I don't know. But oh man, that, that's my oh. main thing against uh, yeah. loot boxes. They're they're fine. There's risk yeah. to it. Um, they're fine as long as it's cosmetic. Um, it's when you can directly buy power advantages over other players, which you can in Battlefront 2, mm -hmm. at least before they pulled the microtransactions altogether. Um, that's when it's super egregious and not consumer friendly at all. Yeah. So um, do you remember Bioshock? Yeah. Okay. So in Bioshock 2... Uh, there was some noise because um, the DLC was on the disc. Do you remember that? Yeah, that's that's happened. <laughs> so, that's happened with several games. But yeah, yeah. The, I I just I'm just kind of thinking back of like some noise from the video game world, and I remember that uh, when that came oh out boy. because like the PC version that the PC folks 
found that out, they, you know, they find this folder. It's like, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to make me pay, you know, you know, five more bucks or, you know, 10 more bucks or whatever it was to get the DLC. And the DLC was already on the, 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 the disc that was published. Uh, that, that's a separate <laughs> issue. That's carving Oops. out a complete game yeah. and then charging more for it. Yep. Um, you, you got that, it. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's pandemic to yeah. AAA gaming culture right, today right, too. Right, right, right. But the, the, the main point is all of this consumer nonsense Yes. Um, or anti-consumer nonsense. All of this nickel and diming by EA yeah. really reflects bad on the Star Wars license. Yes. Um, and, and so, and, I, and obviously ahead. that that's why Iger's like, uh, you guys got to cut this, you know? Yeah. It's supposed uh, to so, complement, it's supposed to complement the hype for Last Jedi. And yeah. all it is, is deflecting it. And, it, it's, and it's it, part of the marketing, marketing push. And yes, exactly. He's exactly. screwing it up. Um, <laughs> Big time, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. as we know, when Disney bought uh, Lucasfilm and started divvying up the rights to all the all the individual properties, yeah. EA got the sole license to do any video games from here on out. Um, right, right. And they're not really doing too well with it. They've released right. two games. One was you know, kind of mediocre. One was just like a huge catastrophe upon every level. Yeah. Um, they, well, and, and, and they, I was sorry there. And, and they're, you know, we just got news of the game that, um, gosh, now I'm blanking out the dead space developers, uh, um, visceral, visceral. They closed down that studio, rebooting the whole thing. And it's going to be basically what, for what it sounds like, it's going to be destiny and not, Uncharted. That's what yeah. I mean. It's kind of like they totally flipped the gears and just said, "Yeah, we're going to have the super intense single player, and we're not going to make money off it. So now we're going to make it Destiny, and we're going to make money off of it." And uh, with this news, plus with what just happened with Battlefront, that's not sitting well with me at all. It's oh like, yeah. Oh, could have had a you, super you gotta... tight, super tight single player game, and now you're going to bring in loot crates on this uh, one and it's just like yeah oh. yeah so how's ea doing yeah. they're they got the light the you know yeah the best license you could ask for absolutely um, absolutely and they, they've got one mediocre game one disaster yeah. um a an aborted third game yeah in what five years five years yeah so it's, it's like what are they doing and yeah. they they've yeah. They've brought like a ton of bad reputation on the game, which reflects poorly on Disney. And we all know Disney's very protective of their image. Um, I'm thinking they're going to pull the license from EA pretty soon. Like I'm and thinking it's going to be that bad. Yeah, and there'll be much rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. yeah. Hopefully I, they I can agree. hand it off to somebody better. But I, you know, I, again, this is the power of the internet and the power of the people. But like. I'm sure we're, we're, there's already some closed door meetings since yeah. uh, since that Thursday meeting and or that Thursday conference call or whatever they did and you know yeah. um, I'm sure there's going to be some meetings how we're going to rectify this uh, very soon because again we're dude we are 23 days out from Last Jedi uh, yeah and, and it's like you don't. <laughs> You know, you don't want to mess up, mess up the stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> as far as we know, they're going to, yeah. they're going to add loot the microtransactions back in at a later date. We don't know when, we don't know what form they're going to take. Um, yeah. My cynical self says that it's pretty much going to be the same as before. They're just going to wait a while to let the steam blow over yeah. before they add it back in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't we don't really know, and yeah, we don't know. We're talking about a lot of industry nonsense, but um, we 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 do so just because we know a lot of people that listen to our show play video games, are interested in video games, and yeah. so it reflects on them. Yeah. And it just also reflects in the Star Wars license because this could very well mean somebody else is developing Star Wars games, or multiple people get the license. Um, I'm hoping it just like, well. Disney won't do this, but... What, what, what like, are you hoping for? I was hoping for, like, 
back in the day, Lucasfilm would basically just hand out a license to anybody who um, demonstrated competency at adapting <laughs> right. the license. Right, yeah. That's why we got so many books and games and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Disney's way too protective of their IP to do that. They're yeah. going to select somebody that they trust. They're right. Gonna, I hope they find their Ryan Johnson of video games. Oh, okay. And I, I like that um, analogy. Yeah. Yeah. And some somebody that they trust, somebody who's going to do right by them, hopefully do right by consumers, and make some pretty sweet games. Yeah. Yeah. And, and push the creativity and push, you know, that kind of thing. So. Yeah. I, I hope Disney gets the message. Yeah. So um, real quick, because uh, that, that was a lot of, like you said, that was a lot of industry stuff but i mean it's so hot <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, i mean it's this boiling. is like unfolding like la- yeah. last week and up till today we're, we're recording on tuesday i'm gonna flip it tonight and to, yeah, so it's yeah. up by wednesday but it's right. like this is breaking news it, it, it's yeah it's so hot but you know uh there's still a game to play <laughs> so yeah uh, like real quick i mean um if you haven't played it yet like uh put on pause or fast forward or something but just i mean the the gameplay is great it looks beautiful um and i'm hearing great great things i don't have an xbox x but the xbox x is, xbox one x is leaps and bounds like eye candy galore um mm-hmm. and and the engine runs pretty smooth i mean you got the native you know you're seeing really good graphics both on the pro and the xbox one x and I have an Xbox One and it, it runs really smooth, um, and it looks it looks pretty. You know, it looks good. Oh yeah. Um, multiplayer is fun and it's good now. You know what's different from uh, Battlefront is you know before you could just be a soldier and all you really all all the credits that you built up really just to change the skin. It really didn't change how you played the game. Um, and this time they, they basically have your four classes. So you have your assault, your heavy, your officer and your specialist. And, um, it really gives a little bit more variety in the gameplay. And obviously you can, uh, with the start cards and everything here, we can build up each of those classes. Uh, each of those classes have different weapons and you actually can progress by using those weapons, which is your, kind of standard video game format, which is great. And, uh, you know, you're playing through all the different errors, which is fun. And you get this, you know, you could be, you know, rebel rebels and stormtroopers and clone troopers and battle droids and all that fun stuff. So, I mean, it's all there and it's all fun and it's all star Wars. And, uh, some of the levels are, are very cool. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's a good game. Unfortunately, this this uh, divisiveness it's got cancer. And, it's got cancer. Yeah, and no one's gonna touch it, um, which is a shame because I, I think there there yeah. is definitely some value in it. Um, and uh, I play through the single player. The single player is a little uh, short. I would say it's not uh super long i would say probably five hours or so um it's pretty and, short for a single player campaign yeah and, and well yeah i mean it's not like this 40 hour you know adventure but um it, it's uh, <laughs> it's a little <laughs> um yeah i don't want to spoil it for everyone because it just came out so i want i'll, I'll kind of save it maybe for a later date um but there is some canon tie-in um, which is good. There you go. And um, I, I also have a theory um, through the single mm. player that maybe tie into you know the films, but I don't know if that's going to play out because like not everyone's going to play the game. But you know, um, but yeah, it's there's uh, yeah. Did you finish your Furnace Squadron or Squad? I did. Okay. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, if if you're looking for like a true like oh the empire and stuff, it doesn't do it for me, and that's that's very disappointing. Uh, as Man. far as this, yeah, I know, I know. And uh, again, I'm not gonna I'm gonna keep it spoiler free at this point. So I'll just say, uh, it was, you know, again being you know 
we're we're diehards here. You know, we love we love yeah. the Star Wars franchise. And to me, uh, it falls short in delivering um, a true imperial perspective. But it does do a good job as far as like introducing some of the heroes and how the story interacts. It, it's pretty cool. Um, and there, like I said, there is some canon tie-in, which is really nice. So, uh, you know, I hate to rate things, but it's it's okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's 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 okay. okay. It, it's okay. But yeah, so there is a lot of game. I you know, I'm like, they're already gonna. They already said that they're gonna release some single player content right before Last Jedi drops, which is pretty interesting in itself. So, um. Yeah, I, I it's it it looks great. The motion capture on the single st- on the on the um story mode is fantastic. It it looks mm. it looks like a movie, which is cool, you know. And we're all, yeah. I mean we're literally um and we're literally at that point, you know, uh back in the day when you know we had all those like Final Fantasy cut ins. You're like, "Oh my cutscenes, you're like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing." <laughs> and then you go to the yeah. game and it's like pixels, you're like, "Oh." Yeah. But, we're we're really getting to the point where it's almost the same thing and that's that's pretty amazing you know um yeah so yeah so uh you know um it's star wars it's cool it's it's fun but i really think again like you said aaron i mean it's just like there's a cancer people are jaded about it and unfortunately not a lot of people are going to play this product based on just this whole PR debacle. So I know, um, at least for myself, Rutch and Armand, we pretty much have decided that on an ethical basis, we don't want to give EA our money, <laughs> right. which, right. Yeah. which is a shame. I, I'd like to at least give video games like a shot. Um, yeah. That's why I bought yeah. the first one. But it's like, right. what kind of message am I sending if I'm going to, you know, give them any kind of money after, yeah. after what yeah, happened? Sure. Yeah. At least that's where uh, I stand with that. Right. Okay. Well, I, I'm the sucker that dropped down the 80 bucks. So there you go. <laughs> so, but yeah. That's fine. I, it's your money. Fine. I can't tell you what to do with it. I know. I know. I know. Uh, all right. So there you go. That is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> woof. Woof. That was, that was rough, man. That was rough. So. Why don't we move on to news of the week? Oh boy, here we go. All right, here we go. And now, the Star Wars news of the week. So first up, uh, these first two are like things that were brought up, uh, I would say early September, August time frame. Um, John Boyega, you know, came out and said, hey, yeah, uh, the Prince William and Prince Harry visit the set and they had fun. And, you know, they, they actually, you know, Star Wars did show some pictures of them behind the scenes. Um, but it, it's confirmed, confirmed. We have pictures now, too, of <laughs> them dressed up as First Order Stormtroopers. Oh, boy. It's a cameo. So, it's a cameo. So William and uh, Prince William, Prince Harry are going to be uh, first order stormtroopers. I don't know if they'll get a ton of screen time, but they're in there. So good for them. I guess if you're royalty, you know, you get to do these things. So I've always been curious about stormtrooper cameos. Yeah. I guess it's not something you can really prove. You just kind of have to take the word of the take the yes. word of the filmmakers on that. Well, yeah, it was it's very similar to, um, it, you know, like uh, Daniel Craig obviously is the first order stormtrooper in The Force Awakens. That yeah. is Ray does the Jedi mind trick on. Um, and well, him you can actually hear his voice. You can hear his voice, and you're like, "Yep, that's Daniel Craig." Um, I also heard like Kevin Smith did some voiceovers for first order stormtroopers, but you know, yeah. So you know, you know, like you said, it's not really something that you could like prove ish. But you know, hey, if I was, dude, if, I would love to be a stormtrooper and start yeah. like, hey, there I'm you are one. <laughs> there I am, just holding up that wall right there. That's fantastic, yep. right there. You know, so you're the janitor so, yeah. stormtrooper in the background. <laughs> right, I got that mop. I'm doing it. I'm doing that right there. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah. So that is confirmed. 
Uh, the other one that was floating around early September is, was the um, the length of time of Star Wars. So when Ryan Johnson was still kind of editing, he's like, yeah, we're looking to, you know, it, it's going to be a longer film. Um, but now it is confirmed. It's a hot 150 minutes. Two and so, a half hours. So that is the longest Star Wars film. It is eight minutes longer than the previous longest Star Wars film, which was Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Can you believe I'm happy that? It's a long movie. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. happy. Um, I I feel like a lot of Hollywood movies are rushed, or they feel uh-huh. rushed. Yeah, um, they try to spit a lot of content at you all at once, and it's hard to follow and. It's it's good to have a slow burn every once in a while. So, well, uh, yeah, and we we de- yeah we debate debate about this before too. Is like you know, uh, you know that's why the t- the the TV show market is so hot now is because you have these you know ten to twelve you know ten to sixteen episode TV shows that are really developing characters and driving right. the story, um, and it's very hard to f- do all that in a two hour movie. And now that we have, you know, 150 minutes of awesomeness, um, it's going to be, you know, it's two hours and 30 minutes. And I think that is going to allow it to breathe a little bit and you get that good, uh, you know, character development. And obviously Disney feels really strong about Ryan Johnson because now he's going to do three more. So yeah, I'm excited. I don't think Rutch will be. (laughs) He's uh, no. Yeah. We, we watched, uh, (laughs) Blade Runner 2049 together. Armand and I were like, it, it, that was a three hour movie, by the way. Armand yes. and I were like, that was amazing. That was like the best experience of our lives. And Roger's was like, eh, it was too long. I was kind of bored. But that's Rutch. <laughs> that's Rutch. Yeah. Yeah. We're all entitled to our opinions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, dude, I'm with you, man. I'm excited. 150 minutes. Uh, that's, that's, that's fantastic. You know. It's I, I'm just, I was already thinking, I'm like, man, I've got to hold off on the soda. we got to make sure I make it through. <laughs> so. All right. Next up. Um, Lord and Miller are famous directors from the Han Solo film that are no longer associated with that picture. Uh, yeah, they finally came out and talked about their departure. So um, basically what they said was um, the experience of shooting the movie was wonderful, said Lord. We had the most incredible cast and crew and collaborators. Uh, I think the terms of us leaving the project, I think everybody went in really good intentions. Our approach to making the movie was different than theirs. There was a really big gap to bridge and it proved to be too big. Mm. (laughs) Mm Hmm. Hmm. I want to believe. Yeah, I do too. I, I want to believe it's as good yeah. to say, make yeah. it sound, but I'm yeah, not too sure. Yeah. So, are they going to get credit for this or no? Um, I really don't know. I mean, with because, uh, with, the with way, like Zack uh, Snyder pulling out of uh, Justice League, and then yeah. um, who Josh was Josh Whedon that, came in. Yeah, yeah, Josh Whedon filmed up like yeah. Josh Whedon's getting like a filming and directing credit. Um, so, well, you know, know, it's, it's, it's very interesting how this kind of panned out because at first it was like, you know, they were four or five weeks out from wrapping up the film. Then they bring in Ron Howard and it come to find out like he pretty much reshot everything. So if they're not, you know, like say for example, they use Lord of Miller's like action sequence would that entitle them to get credit or is it, I don't, you know, I don't not really sure how that all works, but it seems a little. Yeah. I'm not sure who decides um, who gets I'm sure credit that ha- for a movie. I'm sure it has to be something with the screen guild. Like, Hey, you know, if you do X and X amount of, you have to get some kind of credit or, you know, but maybe that's why they reshot everything. So Lord and Miller, have no credit. I'm not really sure, you know? Mm-hmm. So. 
it'll be like director Ron Howard and those two other guys for five minutes or something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll go in like the special thanks section. Oh, there you go. At the bottom, at the very bottom. Yep. Special thanks. <laughs> it, it is kind of awkward. It's, it's very awkward. Um, split you know um so we'll see i hope i never show up on a special thanks section of the credits <laughs> here's your oh. participation prize oh no oh no okay so there you have it that is the news of the week All right, moving on to continue chats. Aaron. Yeah. What is going on with you in Star Wars? Anything else going on, my friend? Uh, I'm afraid not. It's um, been a wind sprint to the finish uh, with the semester winding down. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I will say my uh, my dorm floor has taken upon themselves to screen all six of the uh, original Star Wars movies. Um you know, one every week, every Saturday night. Um, they just finished up with um, Revenge of the Sith last week. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, from what I hear, it was a hoot because uh, a lot. Of, <laughs> you, I mean, you, haven't, you, you, you weren't able to participate in any of those six? <sighs> no, I wasn't. It was all during uh, times when I had prior obligations. But right, 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 um, right. Yeah. The important thing is, I think. Um, we're talking about people mostly my age, slightly younger. Yes. A lot of them had never seen Star Wars. and That is crazy think, to me. That is crazy. Yeah. I mean, you and I growing up, it's like Star Wars is like a household name. It's like yeah. everybody's seen it. Right. Um, that's getting less it. and less true as time goes on. So it's uh, pro- props to my friend Danny for uh, making sure that the torch stays lit. Yeah. And uh, we pass down Star Wars um, right. you know, even as we go along. Right. Well, they 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 still got Force Awakens and Rogue One. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't so. know if he's doing that, but we'll see. Well, you should talk to Danny and say, "Hey, yeah, hey man, <laughs> hey man," and then and then you can then you can finally show up, you know, and yeah. spread and spread your knowledge. Spread Star Wars cheer loudly for all to hear. That's right. That's right. As as we get into the holiday season, I mean, it's like, yep. You know. <laughs> How about you, Todd? Oh man, uh, playing Battlefront too, you know. So you doing go. that, yeah. Uh, I just finished uh, Bloodlines, and I am reading uh, Princess Leia. Uh, it's a new book, um, more Ooh. of a like a. I think it's geared for junior, not like a junior novel, but um, it's pretty good. So I'm reading that. Yeah. Um. So I'm doing that. And uh, I am doing on my personal Instagram at tizod, T-I-Z-Z-Z-Z-O-D. Um, I'm doing a countdown. I'm doing a 40 a lot images. A lot of Zs. Four Zs. Four Zs. Um, I'm doing a countdown for Star Wars, for Last Jedi. So I started, I started, uh, four, I'm doing 40 images in 40 days. So just picking out like, different images that mean something and you know just a little doing a little write up on that and so um there you was, go. well like so yeah so like for force awakens i think it did like 30 days out kind of build rogue one rogue one i did 75 days out i was very excited Jeez, about rogue that was one. a marathon <laughs> it was a marathon um and i pulled it off so i was pretty happy just like picking out different things um but yeah for this one i'm doing kind of like like 40 of my favorite images. So that's been fun kind of figuring out ways and then try, I'm trying to tie it back to last Jedi if I can. So, you know, there you go. just, just being creative, you know, trying to, trying to itch, itch that creative bug. So yeah. Yep. So that's what's going on with me. All righty. Should I wrap, wrap us up this, there? Yeah. Wrap it Put up tight. Up. Wrap it up like a Thanksgiving gift, like a Thanksgiving yes. turkey. Yeah, like, like a, a big old turkey. Some other metaphor. There you go. <laughs> right. Ooh, very good. Right, right. Yeah. You know, 
Again, if you uh, you know only pay five ninety nine, you'll get the uh, deluxe ah. version <laughs> <laughs> with the special Thanksgiving outro. No, um, so yeah, uh, uh, WSR crew want to just uh, want to wish everybody uh, a very happy Thanksgiving, and I hope you eat a lot of whatever you eat, whatever your family tradition is. You know, um, yeah. So I hope everyone has a very wonderful uh, Thanksgiving. But thanks again to listening to another episode of WSTR Podcast. Once again, check us out on social media, WSTR Media, all one word, all lowercase. Uh, we want to hear from you. So comment, tweet, rate us on iTunes. You can email us on WSTRpodcast at gmail.com. We, like to, uh, we also have a voicemail option. So you can call us at 630-557-557. WSTR, which is 630-557-9787. So, hey, if you're, you're kind of salty about those microtransactions, <laughs> leave us a seething email or voicemail, and uh, maybe we'll play it up on an uh, upcoming episode. Uh, mm. uh, we'd like to hear from you, you know. So, But, yeah, so that's all the ways you get a hold of us. So, Aaron. Yeah. Now. This this is podcasting. Yay! Happy Thanksgiving. Eat turkey. Eat turkey. Watch Star Wars. Yes, watch Star Wars. Exactly. Watch Star Wars and eat turkey. There you go. There you go. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs>